All right, good afternoon, class. So I'm going to start from the very beginning of this chapter, which is uh, wait, thermal equilibrium. Oh, but again, I just need to remind you guys because uh, this is what well, this was a common mistake that was made by the Form 5 students. And I've done this with my Form 4 students. I'll just, we'll just go through this really quickly, okay? Comparison between heat and temperature. Okay, very, very quickly, tell me what is the SI unit for heat? Joel's, thank you. What is the SI unit for temperature? No, there's only one choice, generally. <laughs> Kelvin. But the common one that we use is degree Celsius. Okay? So the more common unit that we use is degree Celsius. All right. So in terms of the difference between heat and temperature, if you were asked for the definition of heat, and I know you can look this up really quickly, but I'm just going to uh, go through this very because this, uh, I mean, we will just do a, a quick comparison because this was a common point of confusion, I think, for a lot of students. If you were asked to give the definition of heat, well, how could you, uh, what could you write? You know, definition, uh, compare, uh, what's the difference between heat and temperature? So I think you've learned before that it was the it's about comparing the kinetic energy, right, of the particles. So heat, oh my goodness, <laughs> heat, boy, oh, <hey>, stop heat, <laughs> heat, right? The difference between heat and temperature. Heat is a total kinetic energy of the particles in an object, right? We're talking about the the, the energy of the particles in the object. Temperature in comparison is the average kinetic energy of the particles. But you can't write average kinetic energy of an object. Cannot. If you don't put the word particles, it's wrong. Because if you just say kinetic energy of an object, that's energy. Temperature is the measure where we of, of, of comparing the average kinetic energy of the particles. So this comparison is important for us to remember. Just because an object has high temperature doesn't mean it, that it has a lot of heat. And just because it has a lot of heat doesn't mean it has high temperature. Right? For example, if you have two objects, right, let's say with the same amount, not same amount, same temperature, same material, but maybe different mass. Let's say this one is like 100 grams and this one, let's say, is like 10 grams. But then they both happen to have the same temperature, 100 degrees Celsius. They have the same temperature. Do they have the same amount of heat? No. Which one has more heat? Yep, the one on the left. Right, so you can have something you can have two objects with the same temperature, but they can have different amounts of heat because of uh, the mass that they have. So, the mass in this case, we're just looking at one of the factors, but we also know that there are a lot of other factors which we'll look into specific heat capacity shortly. Okay, so this is just to remind you when you have to make comparisons about heat and temperature, right? This is generally how we do the comparison. Um, okay, thermal equilibrium. Thermal equilibrium definition, or rather the conditions, right? There are two conditions for thermal equilibrium. Give me the two conditions. Oh, I didn't study, so no one knows. Huh. Net transfer of heat is zero, yes. Secondly? Okay. 
Okay, net rate of heat transfer is zero. Okay. Second, second condition. When we say two objects are in thermal equilibrium. All right. So when it comes to definition of thermal equilibrium, you just need to mention these two conditions. Thermal equilibrium is the, con the concept where the net transfer of heat is zero and the objects are at the same temperature. So remember that the word net is very important. You cannot say transfer of heat is zero because that's wrong. Transfer of heat is equal in both directions, but the net transfer of heat is zero. Okay, right? Also remember, thermal equilibrium is a concept. It is a situation. It's not a process. So when we look at the process, you know, the one uh, you, you all, from five, you all learned last year, right? Uh, from four, you all learned, you know, in, in, in last century, because I know you all feel like it's a very long time ago. Um, say if you have two objects. Oh, shoot. What's the change? Uh, it's so long ago. It's like it's like I never used Jamboard before like that. Okay, so um, so when you place two objects in thermal contact, in thermal contact means that they're in such a position that there's uh there is heat transfer allowed. Th uh, thermal contact right doesn't necessarily have to be object to object. It can also be object to air. You know, for example, in in an aircon room, right, like. Um, the objects are in thermal equilibrium with the room, right? And they're in thermal contact because the air particles and the object, they are transferring heat. Or in an oven, you put your cake in the oven, you want the, the cake to bake, right? There is thermal contact between the, the cake batter and the air in the oven. There will be heat transfer between the air particles and the cake batter, ma. so those are also in thermal contact, okay? So, if there is heat transfer, right? Remember, there's heat transfer in both directions. But what happens here, this is not thermal equilibrium. This is just a process of heat transfer until, until, it, until they get thermal equilibrium. Then in, at thermal equilibrium, right, then both of them will have the same temperature. So remember that thermal equilibrium is the concept where both of these objects reach the same temperature and they, the, the transfer of heat is equal in both directions or quite simply, the transfer of heat. So thermal equilibrium is only for this situation. Okay, Thermal equilibrium is not a process okay it is a concept any questions So thermal equilibrium then, um, I think in your syllabus there is not much that they test you on um, because it's just a concept. The one that we need to test you on is the, the thermometer. So when it comes to the thermometer, you know, I'm, I'm just drawing random here because if I don't draw, it's uh, very boring. So here's the thermometer. I'm drawing mercury thermometer. Lah, huh? So remember that there's many different kinds of thermometers, right? Uh, you know, we've got a mercury thermometer, resistance thermometer, th uh, we've got the thermocouple thermometer, the T, that one, right? Uh, the one where you all go to the the, 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 shop, the shopping complex, or you come, if when you're in front, you come to school and you think, wow, I can read the temperature. Those are all infrared. Infrared thermometers uh, have a very, very different ways of detecting heat. That one we won't touch. We, in your syllabus, we only focus on the mercury thermometers, right? So for mercury thermometers, Remember, we're looking at the um, expansion of the mercury column. Quick question, what is it, what is the, what property of the mercury changes with heat? Correct. 
correct volume. It's the volume of liquid that changes. So when it comes to um, the therm thermometer questions, you can choose to memorize the formula if you wish to. Formula is this one, theta equals to L theta minus L0 over L100 minus L0 times 100 degrees. Oops, ah, my goodness. <laughs> 100 degrees Celsius. You can choose to memorize this if you want to. FYI, this formula is not given in the exam. Why not given? Because it is not a basic formula. It is a derived formula. So if you feel like, oh, must memorize, ah, up to you lah. I didn't say you must memorize, ma, right? So if you, see, I cannot guarantee you that this question will come out. I don't know. I don't know if it's coming out or not. So if you don't want to memorize and you're like, oh, then how will I solve it? Remember, you can solve it using the ratio method. The reason why the ratio method is acceptable is because the expansion of mercury is linear. The expansion of the, the volume of mercury, or in this case, the expansion of the length of the mercury column is linear. So when you do the ratio method, you have to use your mathematics. This is not additional mathematics, so you shouldn't feel like you want to die, all right? What they will always give you is the, the length at ice point and the length at steam point. So if this is, I'm just making markings here. So imagine like, okay, the, where the mercury expanded to, I make the marking here. Uh, this, is, this would be where the mercury would have expanded to when, it, uh, when you put it in ice, ice point. Uh. Then let's say this is the, 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 the marking, right? The mercury expands all the way up when you put it in steam or boiling water. That's steam point, 100 degrees Celsius. So if this is an uncalibrated thermometer with absolutely no markings, you have to make the markings in real life. La. Questions, they will give you. La. So they will tell you in a question, the length of the column as such they'll give you then um depending on the question they could either ask you to calculate the temperature that's unknown or ask you to calculate the length of something usually they ask you for the temperature lab because in real life you have the length mark right so just remember basically right if you want to solve this for those of you who are very strong at maths this is a ratio of the temperature to length so you just remember it's the ratio of temperature to length. So that means uh, if we're taking the ratio of temperature, that means it's you, you're comparing, right? Um, the temp the, the like basically I'll write it this way, theta between theta to zero. You, you remember it's a difference, okay? So the, the def difference in this case is theta minus zero, difference between these two ratio to 100 minus zero. And this ratio happens to be equal, equal to the ratio of the length. That means you imagine like this number is here. And then this number is here. The ratio of yellow to green for the temperature is equal to the ratio of the length. Therefore, the length would be, the, that's why it's L0, L theta minus L0. So you take this, this length, this value of this L, uh, this L, uh, this L, to this L. Okay? So when you look at it, in the end, it's like, hey, this yellow color is basically L theta minus L0. Ma. L theta minus L0. The green color L is basically what L100 minus L0. All said and done, you see this formula and this ratio is actually exactly the same. What I'm showing you is just how to derive the calculation without memorizing the formula. Okay? I know the question doesn't write 0 and all that because theta minus 0 is 0. Ma. So theta to 100 equals L theta minus L0 over L, to, sorry, equal to ratio of L100 minus L0. Remember ratio, right? You can put it as a fraction. L theta. Okay, and then you solve from there. Now, of course, there's a whole bunch of, of, of what you call um, symbols there. But when you have numbers, then it's easy. You just straight away get the number, put the number in the, the ratio straight away. You can count up. Any questions?
no questions. Go and do crap. You uh, to get to 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 there to make sure that you got it right. Make sure you do questions. I'm using the word questions a lot. Go and do some exercises. Okay, next specific capacity versus specific latent heat. I don't think you get con you, you any of you are getting confused between uh, these two because the um. Okay, so I don't think anyone's pretty, pretty confused between specific heat capacity and specific latent heat. I think it's pretty clear. But uh, when it comes to the definition, I know that the definition is the bane of everyone's lives. Um, I don't want to draw the line here. Um, just remember that you have to mention its material. Uh, so specific heat capacity is the amount of heat energy needed to change every uh, one kg of the material, right? Temperature by one degree Celsius. Specific latent heat it's just the amount of heat needed to change the state of one kg of the material. Um, but I always say, like, don't, don't stress about the definitions. Definitions are only worth one mark. Focus on the application, okay? So, specific heat capacity formula is Q equals mc theta. Specific latent heat formula is Q equals ml. Remember that it's not Q. Specific heat capacity is C. Specific latent heat, specific latent heat is L. Alright, what's Q? Can anyone tell me what's Q? Heat, thank you. What about M? Mass, thank you. And uh, theta? Correct. Change in temperature. So remember that um, if you are ever confused about the units for specific heat capacity and specific latent heat, use the formula to help you figure it out, right? Um, Cause it's really three thirty. Let's. I'll just give you the units here. We know it's degrees Celsius. So this is the temperature is always the unusual one where we don't use SI units, right? The only time we ever use Kelvin is in gas laws. Okay. We have all the other times we use degrees Celsius. Why? No need to know the why. You just okay, like the why is because Kelvin is 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 it's difficult to work in with with hundreds in the lab. So that's why we and our thermometers are always in degrees Celsius. So it's a lot easier um, for us to use degrees Celsius in everyday application because it's relevant. Hmm. Like all the others, joules, kg is something we use every day, right? But Kelvin is not. So Kelvin, we only tend to use Kelvin in lab. Like even when we uh, do industrial research, right, and want to do temperature measurements, it's always Kelvin. Um, yeah, that's the only time we ever use it. So remember that if you want to, to get the unit for specific capacity, just rewrite this. So like this, right, Q is what? Joules, all right? M is what? Kg. Temperature is what? Degree Celsius. Joules per kilogram per degree Celsius. No? Joules per kilogram per degree Celsius. That's how you work on it. Okay, same thing for specific latent heat. No need to think so much. In fact, this is probably a lot easier. You've got your L equals Q over M, and then your unit is what? Uh, on top is what? Joules. Ah, uh, kilogram. Ta da! Joules per kilogram. So easy. Okay, so remember that specific heat capacity involves a change in temperature. All right. Specific latent heat, there's no change in temperature, but there is a change in state. So when it comes to the comparison between specific heat capacity and specific latent heat, if we look at the heating graph, okay, so like, so for example, if you're heating graph, always check the question first, yeah, whether it's, um, whether they're heating from solid or heating from liquid. They must tell you, la, don't, don't assume that it's from solid. Sometimes they start from liquid, uh, so read the question carefully. Now, let's say in this case, la, um, starting from solid, all right? So remember that uh, you can come, you know, like you, 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 you can think of it this way. Yeah? So the, this part here, there's a change in temperature, right? So which means that this section, which I'll mark in, uh, let's, let's change it. Yeah, let's, it's yellow. La. So this part would be, uh, let's say it's, it's solid, right? That means he, this part is where you would calculate, let's say Q equals MC theta if you have to count the heat. This part is liquid only. Again, so this is Q equals MC theta, right? This section, there's no change in temperature. So there's a change in state. So that means this part would be, I'll write in short form, solid plus liquid. So this would be Q equals ML. 
and this would be liquid plus gas lah. That means liquid becoming gas. Also, again, Q equals ml. So why when you know why why you need to be aware of this is because if they give you graph questions and you need to be able to calculate um the the value of the specific heat capacity or specific latent heat, then you need to know which sections you need to to consider. But if they give you a graph, then normally it's not Q. You have to use the formula, uh, the power formula. So this is derived from the formula of power equals energy over time, specifically heat. So I'm going to write this as Q. Therefore, Q equals PT. So another formula that you need to be aware of is PT equals MC theta or PT equals ML. When to use this formula? If the question gives you power or time, then you have to use PT. Lah. Okay, so the one that is given in the formula sheet. This is given. Okay, this is also given. The rest don't have lah, because these are derived, no? derived formula. Um, the power formula is also given, but they write it as power equals energy over time. Okay? Any questions up to this point? Okay. For you to just be aware, uh, this is the heating graph, which you've learned in chemistry already, right? You've learned this already in chemistry. If you have a cooling graph, which is also something you've learned in chemistry. Temperature and time. Um, it's nearly the opposite of the heating graph. But sometimes you may come across a question where they can have suddenly, ah, uh, oh, what happened? You got extra here and oh, you got extra one here. Why got extra one? Have you ever, any of you ever encountered this question, kind of question before? Come from where on this thing? Like, hey, I thought only got two, 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 third one here come from where one? Uh? Why the pyramid got extra one? Uh? Oh, we're not plasma. Uh? Mm -hmm. no. If you got extra one, it's always room temperature. You have to be careful, la, all right? Uh, I'm talking in general. I'm not saying this is coming on an exam, all right? But you just have to be aware in general when you go and do questions. Sometimes you get an extra one because it's a room temperature question. Sometimes uh, you don't even get to the solid stage. Like if you have the cooling graph of water, you can't even reach solid state. It will be basically, let's say, uh, from steam to boiling water, then it will just... And it will stay uh, at room temperature. Say if room temperature is 25 degrees Celsius, it will stay at 25 degrees Celsius. And this stage is this, it's not no change of state. Right? During this stage, it's all liquid. Because you understand this is you understand why, right? It, it's not it's not freezing. You get this graph if the freezing point is below room temperature. You get this graph if the freezing point is above room temperature. For example, naphthalene. If naphthalene, right, um, is, is uh, undergoes cooling like this, right, the freezing point of naphthalene is about 80 degrees Celsius, right, 79 degrees. I'll just put 80 lah. Here it's really solid. So it, it, was, it still cools down and suddenly it hits this white equilibrium with room temperature. Just for you to be aware. Okay. Any questions? Yeah, it's very easy to get confused. At this part, this is where heat is used to break the bonds. At this part, heat is used to increase the kinetic energy of the particles. So during the heating stage, um, let's say of solid to solid, here, uh, here, uh, here. Uh. So the particles are absorbing heat energy and moving faster and faster and faster and faster. That's why the temperature is going up. Then when it hits its melting point, the average kinetic energy stays the same. So the particles are now moving with the same kinetic energy throughout. But the heat is used to push them further away from each other. So that's why they change from solid to liquid. Because that's why we come back to 
understanding temperature. Temperature is what the average kinetic energy of the particles. So the temperature remains the same. The average kinetic energy is also the same. So boiling water at 100 degrees Celsius and steam at 100 degrees Celsius have the same average kinetic energy of the particles. Doesn't mean they have the same heat energy total, uh, but the particles have the same average kinetic energy because they have the same temperature. But why? But the, but the steam have more heat? Yes, it does. It has more heat because the heat has gone into pushing them away from each other. Heat and temperature, remember, they are related, but they're not the same thing. Huh? Can follow? So for the cooling graph, the cooling graph is basically the um, just the opposite. Lor. So the, the decrease, the, the slanted part, is when the particles lose um, heat energy. So it's actually moving, getting slower and slower and slower. So that's why the temperature drops. At the point where they're, they're changing state, whether it's um, here or whether it's here, and it's the opposite of the heating graph. That means it's same um, average kinetic energy, but now heat is being lost. So that means the, they're not being pushed away. So they're getting closer and closer together, but they're maintaining the same average kinetic energy. That's why they maintain the same temperature. Heat is still being lost, but heat is lost from a different part. So you have to, you can think of it as there's two, two parts where heat is stored. If you like, you can think of it like two part, two two areas two two sections. You think of the object uh, two. There's actually two two sections where the heat is stored. One section is in the particles. One section is between the particles. Okay, so if it's inside the particles, that will affect the temperature. If it's between the particles, that will affect the state. Can okay. state. Because you think of it more heat further apart, so it's it's a higher level state, lah. That means whether it's it's liquid or gas. Then if there's less energy, then it gets closer, then then it's like solid lah. Or liquid lah, depending on the comparison. You want me to write that down? Yeah, does this is help? Okay. Next. Um if you come across questions where they ask you to calculate um the the temp, you know, like like where they mix the objects together, like mix two liquids together, and then they ask, okay, what is the final temperature of the the solution and all that, right? Those kind of calculation questions. Okay, so when you come across those kind of calculation calculation questions, always check first: is there one object or two objects? So let's just start with the concept: if it's a single object, one object only. So if it's one object only, then it's very very simple. Basically, you you just need to use either Q equals m c theta, Q equals m l, or Q equals m l plus m c theta. Depends on the question, lah. So usually, if it's one object, means like that they'll ask you how much heat energy is needed to change the ice from zero degrees Celsius to water at uh, fifty degrees Celsius, something like that. So if it's so generally, right, those kind of questions, right, I always advise students look at the question and try to find out is there a change in temperature, and is there a change in state. Because then it will help you determine which formula to use. So if there is a change in temperature, that means you need to use Q equals MC theta. If there is a change in state, then you need to use Q equals ML. If there's both, then you need to use both. So one object, very simple and very straightforward. Lah. Normally, it's just, you know, you just calculate. Lah, calculate lah, okay? Look, I'm not going to spend time on this. I want to talk about the two objects one. So two objects would be what? Like two cups of water, or you're adding milk to coffee, you know, or you put the metal ball inside cold water. 
So if you have two objects, this is the one where most students like they like what 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 monstrosity is this? You know, like like bring it at that spec, please. That people admit them doing this, correct or not? Mm. So if you have two objects, two objects example would be like if you say mixing, let's say milk with coffee, for example, like, Okay. So whichever the question is, all right, whichever the question is, right, you always think of it separately. Um, the milk is one, coffee is another. Even if you're mixing two different cups of water, oh, hot water and cold water, it doesn't matter whether they're the same material because they were they, they came from different sources initially. You treat them as two separate objects. All right, so when this happens, right, they will always find that both of them have different temperatures. If they both have the same temperature, nothing for you to count. If oh, this one is 25, this is 25, ah, this is 25, so I'll count what, like, wasting your time, waste my time, right? So normally it will be two different temperatures. So um, if, you, if you have two, the two objects take note of the temperature, sometimes they don't give you the temperature, they ask you to calculate the temperature. So whichever the case is, then it comes back to, oh, no wonder we have to learn this, this stuff, lah, because the two different temperature objects uh, I didn't label. Uh, uh, this one is the hot object. Woo! And then this one is the hotter. Okay? And this one is the colder. Uh, the temperature, even if temperature difference is 1 degree Celsius, uh, 26 degrees and 25 degrees, uh, still consider hotter and colder. Lo. Then the hotter object will what? Lose net heat. And then the colder object will what? Gain net heat. So, there will be, uh, there will be an exchange of, uh, what do you call, heat energy but there'll be more heat from the hotter object to the colder object so remember there's always one assumption that we make in this chapter what is the assumption that we make exactly no heat lost to surrounding so Although we always say, uh, don't make assumptions. I'm making assumptions will be making an ass of you and me. But never mind, because sometimes in science, we have to make assumptions. Otherwise, we cannot solve questions, right? So we have to make this assumption now. So this is a standard assumption that we make in uh, throughout the entire chapter. No heat loss to surrounding. Heat loss. Eh, see lah, Miss Ho. <laughs> Talk until she not is not paying attention to what she writes. Heat gain by a gem board. First, I saw me. Heat gain. Heat gain. My England correct? Ah? Gain by cold option. Because heat gain is a noun. So heat gained. Because he gained the heat. Heat gain. Uh, keep lost. Ah, okay la, You all know what I mean la, ha, ha. The, the England not perfect also never mind la. Alright, so heat lost by hot object or heat gain is equal to the heat gain by a uh, cold object and yes, that is assumption you make, right? So assumption is no heat lost to surrounding. So anytime, if they ask you for the assumption, this will be the assumption you make when it comes to heat related questions. Then when you want to um, solve this, right? Okay, you have to start with this heat loss equals to heat gain. It, it's not, marks won't, will not be given for this. Uh. You write this out, wow, teacher, I'm so smart. No, too bad, you don't get marks for this. Um, but it's to help you get started. And what you do is you do a side-by-side -side substitution. So you start with, you look at the left side, then you look at the right side. So which means that you just put the equal sign throughout and then you just replace left side and right side. So then the same two questions that were asked earlier, is there a change in temperature and is there a change in state? You ask the same question to the question. You ask the question, oh, you give me the answer. You ask this question on both sides. What object? Is there a change in temperature? Is there a change in state? Then you look at a cold object. Ask, is there a change in temperature? Is there a change in state? So what you do is you individually um, look at the left side and the right side. So for example, example, let's talk about the milk and coffee bit. So if we're doing milk and with coffee, right? Let's say like this side is the coffee lah, huh? Let's say this side is coffee and this side is milk. So now you think, uh, okay, when the, let's say the coffee is hot, I don't care what temperature, lah, we just think of hot coffee, cold milk. Temperature, never mind, we're not solving questions now, I'm just showing you how to get the answer. So you have hot coffee and then you think, oh, now you add cold milk. The hot coffee will change temperature or not, yes or no? Yes, 
the hot coffee will change state or not, yes or no? No. So, so when we ask this question, so I'm just going to put it here so for you. This is, I'm just showing you the logical process. I'm not showing you how to actually write this in exam. Huh? But this is the logical process of how to work the answer out. So there's a change in temperature. There's no change in state. So which means that in the end, you only use MC theta. So the heat loss by hot object is MC theta. Cold object, now you ask that same question. The milk, going to change temperature or not? Yes, will the milk change state or not? No. So again, MC theta, you know? So that's how you, you, you work out whether it's MC theta or ML or whatever. Okay? What if it was... Change, I changed the example, okay? Let's say now we mix... Um, the ice with coffee this time. Lah. Okay, not, now let's say, oh, you like your coffee black, all right? But you, you're so hot, you don't want, so you want cold black coffee. I don't know, I don't know who drinks cold black coffee. I think maybe like, people drink hot black coffee. But you know what? There's all kinds in this world, right? So now let's say, right, because some people, you know, you know what they do is they put Milo on bread and they eat. How many of you do that? Like Milo powder? Not Milo, not Milo drink, lah. I, kind of, I think it's even weirder. Milo powder they put on bread and then they eat. Yeah, it's very popular. <laughs> I know a lot of people like to do that also. How many of you used to, when, when, when you go to McDonald's, you take your fries and you dip into the sundae and eat? <laughs> never? You've never tried to uh, dip the fries into, into the sundae? I do that. <laughs> I don't eat Milo with bread. <laughs> In my Sprite, yes. Oh, you dip your fries in your Sprite. <laughs> I see a lot of people. She will ask me why I waste fries. But you're eating the fries. Man. You're not wasting it. You'll have to try next time, okay? <laughs> okay. Coffee. Put the ice inside. Hot coffee. Will have changed in temperature? Yes or no? Uh, hot coffee, will there be a change in state? You think uh, hmm, the hot liquid will change to gas or change to solid? No, right? So that means it's only MC theta. No? But uh, what about the side of the ice? Now you think the ice... Uh, okay, so by the way, if the question doesn't tell you the temperature of ice, it just tells you ice is added to coffee. Remember that if the ice temperature is not given, you assume it at zero. Okay, I know again... We're not supposed to make assumptions. So, so for some strange reason, this chapter we make like so many assumptions. Itulah um, physics SPM, okay? So I got no, I, I don't have the answers like to why, but, but I know that's the way we do things. So if they don't give you the temperature of ice, ice will assume it to be zero. So now you think, oh, ice at zero. If you put into the hot coffee, will the ice change temperature, yes or no? Yes. Will the eyes change state? Yes or no? Yes. Now for Boho means got what? ML plus MC theta. So that's how, so remember this, you use this approach. So the reason why we write this first sentence out is so that we can work out how to get whether it's MC theta or ML or ML plus MC theta. Okay? Any questions up to this point? Noah, okay, so um, last bit, I, um, how many of you, I just want to check because I, I think most students find gas loss the easiest. How many of, how many of you still confused about gas loss? Will the units be affected? Um, no, because ML because ML is Q, ma. ML is Q, it comes up to joules. MC theta is Q also, that's joules. So in the end, you will just get joules equals to joules. 
joules equals to joules plus joules. But basically, you want to make sure that the units don't get affected. Put everything in SI unit except temperature. So make sure it's kilogram. Okay, make sure your C is joules per kilogram per degree Celsius. Your L joules per kilogram. So make sure your kilogram is your mass is kilogram, not gram. How many of you need me to go through gas laws? Okay. Um, gas laws. There are three gas laws. You have Boyle's law. You have Charles' law. Put it separately. Boyle's law. Uh, let's put it here. Charles' law and the gay lussac law. You all know, right? I think I, I mentioned this to my former students many times. Last time, the, they don't want to recognize the gay lussac law. They call it pressure law. I don't know why. Maybe they scared of the word gay. Which is strange because it's somebody's name. Like Tima. <laughs> Tima's not even someone's name. It's strange. Why do you love the gay lussac law? This best law. Why is it the best law? <laughs> Actually, I don't understand. Like the, it's just somebody's name. I can say Tima is not even someone's name. Okay, Tima just means tin. Eh? But anyway, Gay Lussac. Why did what's what's so awesome about Gay Lussac law? Down a little bit. Let's see, I got space. Gas law, we don't know, <laughs> just because of the name, right? <laughs> Jeez, okay. <laughs> okay, so gas laws. Remember that gas laws, right? You will be only studying um, the... Um, remember that gas laws are used for what? You only use them for gases. Oh, I don't have that meme anymore. I can't find that meme. Oh, there, there it is. I know my Form 4 students have seen this before. Okay, while we're waiting for the thing to load, I don't know why the internet is so slow. So remember that gas loss, um, the consideration... Ah, okay. I don't know, do you all get this, do you all get this meme now? So I just want to remind you, okay, <laughs> you guess laws you use on guesses. Okay, I'm just going to put this meme here as a reminder. Please don't have mental Ill, uh, illness like that. I mean, look, mental health is not something to joke about. But don't lie, use guess law on something else. So guess laws, right? Um, one, the constant in this case is always constant mass. Now we do, uh, now every, now, for, for gas laws, right, we look at three variables, um, pressure, volume, temperature. But every time we want to um, study any of the relationship between the variables, remember, you only study two at a time. The other one must be constant. So pressure, volume, temperature. So this, these three laws, one of these will be constant. So one of it will be constant pressure, one will be constant volume, one will be constant temperature. Okay? Uh, let me put this on its own slide because I, I, need, I need more space to do other stuff. So here's the mean to remind you, okay, that, you know, you don't, uh, please don't use gas law on non-gases. So for gas laws, Boyle's law, who remembers Boyle's law it, uh, studies which two variables or which one is constant? Yep, Boyle is P and V, pressure and volume. Charles Law, leh?
Temperature and volume, yes. Thank you. What about the Gay-Lussac law? Your favorite law? Wait, I'm just going to make it more even. Gay-Lussac law? Pressure and temperature. Pressure of P and V is boiled already. Okay, so Boyle's law states that pressure is inversely proportional to the volume of a gas. So whichever that is not um, in the formula, that one is constant. So Boyle's law applies only when the temperature is constant. Graph in question for Boyle's law. Uh, let me use uh, this color. Remember that if um, you, you're looking at whether it's pressure, volume, volume, pressure doesn't matter, uh, but it is an inversely proportional graph. Um, the other way that they draw the graph is when they plot, let's say, P against 1 over V, that's where you can get a direct proportional graph because it's P against 1 over V. All right. Charles Law. Charles Law. Ah, remember the laws this time is where we have Kelvin Law. So if it's volume against temperature in degrees Celsius, it's where you get a linear graph that does not go through origin. Only and if and only if it's against absolute temperature, then you have a directly proportional graph. And that's exactly the same as the Gay-Lussac law as well. So the Gay-Lussac law, if it's against temperature in degree Celsius, sorry, linear graph. Um, but if it's against absolute temperature, then you have hello, directly proportional graph, right? Okay, so who, who remembers how to convert degree Celsius to Kelvin? Mm, Miss Ho, what's absolute temp again? Who can answer that? Kelvin. So how to convert to Kelvin? From degree Celsius? Pray. Please la, change to Kelvin. Minus 273. You think... 1K is negative 273K. Oh, that number doesn't make sense. How come 1K is negative 273K? Wait. Ah, uh, let's wait. Negative 273K equals 0 degrees Celsius. Negative 273 Celsius. Eh, 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 eh. Uh oh. Plus two seven three? Question mark. Question mark. Yep. You want to convert it to Kelvin, right? T is absolute temperature, which means temperature in the Kelvin scale. To convert degree Celsius to Kelvin, you take the value of degree Celsius, which is always represented with the symbol theta. Theta means degree Celsius. You always take the number in degree Celsius and plus 273. That's how you convert to Kelvin. You are expected to know this. This is not given in the formula sheet. Okay? Must know. Okay? If you get confused, if you get confused, you look at this graph and then you see that, eh, this one is when it's zero. I go backwards. Not you go backwards, lah. The graph go backwards. Negative 273 at the back. So you have to think of it this way. Uh. Zero degrees Celsius is ice. Zero degrees Celsius is ice. Is that the coldest possible temperature that can exist? Temperature can drop below zero, right? So that's the difference. See, zero Kelvin is the lowest temperature that could exist for ideal gases. Remember, absolute zero means what? Who can tell me what does absolute zero mean? Zero Kelvin, exactly. Absolute zero means zero Kelvin. It is the temperature at which gases occupy zero space and have zero pressure. That means zero volume, zero pressure, zero Kelvin at this point. All of them 
zero. Zero, zero temperature, zero pressure, zero Kelvin. Um, I guess you can say it's a vacuum. But it's a very different, it's a vacuum, but it's a different kind of concept of a vacuum. La. Yeah. yeah, it's a vacuum, but, but yeah, it's a different kind of vacuum. Because there's actually gas there. But they occupy zero space, zero volume, and there's zero pressure. Because you're not even moving at all. It's too cold. So cold. So that's how you have to remember. If you get confused, you write down zero degrees Celsius. Okay? But zero degrees Celsius is ice or can go below. Oh, zero Kelvin is closer. Kelvin is less than degree Celsius. So Kelvin must always be a higher number than degree Celsius. So zero degree Celsius is 273 Kelvin. Okay, 100 degree Celsius, 373 Kelvin. So that's, that's what you can use to help you remember whether it's plus or minus. Okay, that's a method I use. Last time also I'm like, oh God, is it plus or minus? Then I always ask myself, hey, but I zero can, it's not the lowest mark. So then I remember, yeah, then you, Kelvin is... The, the, the Kelvin number is, um, zero Kelvin is the lowest number. So that means the Kelvin number is higher, lo, but zero Kelvin is the coldest, ma. So zero Kelvin, negative 273 degrees Celsius. Okay, make sense? So, based on gas laws, right, uh, then you please remember that you must always convert to Kelvin. So, don't be so miserable, okay, uh, that you forgot to use Kelvin. That's another one. Let me show you. <laughs> I think I showed some of you this meme before. Ah, uh, here's another meme, okay? Ah, uh, here's another meme for you to, to recall so that you remember to convert to. Kelvin, okay? Ah, uh, so don't forget to put in Kelvin. This is the only topic where you have to convert to Kelvin. If you get confused, just remember that T, that's why they put T. They didn't put theta. T is absolute temperature. Absolute temperature means what? Temperature in Kelvin. This proves that the gas laws aren't versatile. What do you mean? What do you mean by versatile? Yeah, ma. Memang only applicable to gas, ma. That's why they call gas laws. It's like pressure in liquid, you can't P equals H rho G. You cannot use P equals H rho G in gases and solids also, ma. Because the behavior of gas is unique to gases only, ma. True, not? Um, so when it comes to gas laws... Uh, yeah, so you just, um, you need to know the three laws and what, um, what, which, which variables they are applied for. Converting uh, temperature into Kelvin. So do some practice questions so that you get familiar with um, how to, to use the formula and, uh, how, and remember to, to practice converting it to Kelvin. Formula, all these, all these formula, by the way, but they interchange between different states. Yeah, but so you only apply this in gases, ma. Solids, liquids, gases, uh, gases, they are all different states. They will all exhibit different behavior. If they exhibit the same behavior, then they will just be the, considered the same kind of state. You, that's science, ma. You have metals. All metals have the similar characteristics, but doesn't mean they have the same behavior. Sodium does not behave the same way as aluminium, right? So you have rules for certain groups because that only those group of of um what's the term I'm using for okay, but, um, the group of materials will behave that way. So these formula are not given. What is given is in this form. They will write it this way: PV over T equals constant. So when you see this, you're like. Eh, apa benda ni? Uh, this one is for what? This one is gas law. So you just need to learn how to convert PV over T is into this form. Quite easy lah, huh? Uh, PV over T equals PV over T. Then you just remove the one that is not 
that is not used in that question. Okay? So this one is given. It's given in this form. Any questions? Okay. So happy studying.